Okay, I think I've got everything that I need. So here we are. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing great today. Um, it's Tuesday yet again, and that means it's tutorial time. Uh, one of my favorite days out of the week, and it's a fun time to hang out with you guys um, as we do our tutorial. So first of all, you know that I love to give shout outs to all of my friends out there. So I'm going to say a quick hello to people that are tuning in that I can see their names popping in. So Gail Lauder from YouTube. Hi, Gail. In fact, I actually think I shipped out your uh, workshop kit today. So you were one of the lucky first 10 <laughs> to get it. Um, but I'll be talking more about that here soon. Hi, Tammy, aloha to you. Emily from uh, Motorcrafts is here. Hi, Emily. Um, I believe you were also one of my kit recipients for today. Solidarity Empath, hi. Good to see you from YouTube. Uh, hi, Mimi, Becky. Joan, um, hopefully Ginger will join us here in a bit as well. Laura, it's good to see you. Hi, Leanne, I just saw your names come in. Um, Emily's asking if I joined the live wires yet. I don't think I have. I need, a, I need to go and do some Facebooking. In fact, I've been um, sort of off the social media a little bit just to kind of get my ducks in a row for some future silver silk planning, but I do miss my friends, so I will hop back in that. For sure. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Julie Mercer. Good to see you, ladies. Terry is here. Hi, Terry. So it looks like we've got quite a few folks already tuning in. Hi, Kathy. Um, and several of you have already received a shipping notice for our workshop kit that is coming up very soon. Um, what month are we in? April? May, at the end of May. So um, I'm slowly working to get all the kits sent out as my time allows me to do so, but it's definitely gonna come in um, earlier than I think a lot of folks will expect, which is great, because I love having this stuff out shipped over to you guys in your hands, ready to create. We just simply sit down and do our class and have a good time, no stress and no worries. So always a fun thing. So um, yeah, just bear with me as I, you know, try and get a few kits here and there out the door as I can, um, but they are coming, they're finally being shipped. So that's the good news. <laughs> and um, for those of you who are not able to make the workshop this time, because I sold out within three days, which is crazy, um, I'm going to do the same workshop in the winter season. I haven't quite picked out a month yet, but, I will have enrollment for that for, um, it'll be the same exact scenario, same setup, same workshop, but I know several of you have emailed to ask about what, where can I acquire these kits from and because they're sold out this time, um, I need to do this event again for those of you that did miss out. So it will definitely be up and running again. Um, in fact, we got Janine asking, uh, I'm gonna spotlight your comment do you sell spots and kits available for the May event? I don't, but I will have a second event coming up later in the year, and I will definitely uh, make a note to advertise it to you guys, Silkies, and everyone who, who couldn't join this time. So I didn't realize I was this popular, honestly. Like, I, I, I kind of, you know, shot out a low number of, of attendees and then um, had this overwhelming wave of extra interest in it, which is wonderful. I love that everyone is feeling on the silver silk and giving it lots of love. So um, I'm doing my best on the back end to make sure that I um, give you guys the entertainment and the knowledge, uh, everything silver silk is. So thank you for the interest in that. Leanna is asking, will it be the same kit? Yes. This will be, in fact, a kit that's going to be replenished moving forward permanently. Um, I'm hoping if I can get my ducks in a row. So it'll be a great introductory piece for those of us that are not familiar with working with Silver Silk or are new to it, which it happens constantly. I always get lots of new customers. Um, then they can pick up this kit and make stuff from it just to get themselves a little bit more familiar with how to use Silver Silk. So it's a very important piece for the company and for you know doing future workshops and stuff i have someone saying don't you dare underestimate yourself that's sweet you guys are so nice hi stephanie howard i shipped out your kit today too all right so let's talk about today's tutorial because i'm getting my hands back into hammering something that i love doing love taking out my stress and my worries in my wire <laughs> i hope you guys do too it's so much fun um, so I'm going to be using a very fun tool 
from a very special friend, Brenda Schroeder, who does, uh, who has a co-branded company called Now That's a Hammer with Fritz Hammers. And you may have remembered using uh, me using this in a, a past tutorial. Well, I thought I would revisit a different technique with it today. And this idea popped into my head of doing these really cool joint links that can be very modular and they can be twisted and turned and you know connected differently. Um, very mixed media. For those of you who love mixed media out there, I think, I think my heart is in mixed media. I think you can really make some timeless classic designs just because there is no time associated with the type of material and, and no trend really associated with the type of materials that you're using because it's a mixture of everything. Um, and then there's a careful balance of how you use it. So I am um, using many different things today, but at the same time, not a whole lot. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna cover up my materials first, and then I'm gonna talk about my tools for um, also a second, and then we're just gonna get right into it. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a link, um, which is one of these things down here. And um, I'll cover, of course, the silver silk component of it and the hollow mesh and how to use it and filling it with seed beads. So this is gonna be really, really fun. Hi, Philomena, Donna, lovely to see you. Love it when your name pops in. Hi, Wanda. I love saying hello to my friends, I'm so sorry. Like I, I interrupt myself only to say hello to my friends out there, very important. Okay, so materials. I am using silver, silk, hollow mesh. How many of you guys have this already? Show of hands. Um, for those of you who don't, it is a very um, finely knit woven tubing, if I get the, my wording here correctly, um, the knit is very intricate and it's knitted into a tube by a machine. Um, the tube itself is about four and a half to maybe five millimeters in diameter. So you can stuff anywhere from size maybe four millimeter and down beads. So in this case, I'm using size six seed beads, which is closer to four millimeters. Um, you can actually expand and contract this knitted wire mesh, and you can do that using a couple different tools. I have been hooked on using chopsticks to expand the net, the mesh. Um, luckily today, I think it's actually expanded quite a bit just from the machine itself. So I might not have to use this today. Um, but if you ever find yourself taking Chinese takeout, then you can actually save some of these chopsticks and use them as tools to expand um, your, knit, your knitted mesh here. Now, conversely, if you're trying to draw the wire down into a smaller diameter, you can use what's called a draw plate. This is a plastic or acrylic draw plate. And you can see it's got several different sizes on it, um, everywhere from 10 millimeter all the way down to one and a half millimeter for a very you know tiny um, draw if you wanted to do something very, very small. But for this type of mesh, I recommend going between size six millimeter and then drawing it down to maybe uh, four is probably pushing it. So I'd say four and a half. Um, but I think that that's still quite a bit of range that you can have with your stuffing, if you will. So uh, I also sell this in a three foot spool in 12, it's either 12 or 13 different colors. I can't remember off the top of my head, but lots of different great basic colors and um, neutrals within the palette. So I'm using copper today for this example. And this is one of those colors that matches with everything in your wardrobe. Very easy to use. So I'm gonna be using snippets of that. I've got um, some beautiful coconut colored leather. This is three millimeter leather that I'm gonna be using for my neck rope um, today. And I'm not going to put the hollow mesh over it. You can if you want to. I'm gonna just leave it as is because I think this is part of the mixed media beauty is that I'm going to just strip away any of the extra frou-frou material, keep it very minimalist in my design today and keep the focus on the pendant. Okay, so those two things you will need. Oh, and the length is up to you. If you're wanting a launder necklace, you will use all three feet, which is in the spools that I sell, which by the way, you can find on silversilkonline.com. 
Um, so if you're looking for a longer necklace, you would need all three feet. If you're looking for something shorter um, and wanting to add a clasp, then you can of course cut this down and uh, it'll be whatever the size of your necklace that you want it to be. So a standard would be between 12 and 14 inches a piece and then attaching a clasp to that. The design I'm gonna make today, it doesn't use a clasp, so I'm gonna be using all three feet today. Okay, I didn't mention this in my materials list, which I apologize, but this is what you'll need to stuff the knit mesh with. So I'm using, again, size six seed beads, which are very big. <laughs> um, these are seed beads that I can see very easily, luckily. I noticed that the older I'm getting, the worse my vision is getting. And um, at some point in time, we're talking surgery, but not right now. Uh, but in any case, these are seed beads that everyone can see and pick up and really just, you know, string on anything. Um, but they make a great filler material for hollow mesh. And the color that I'm using is this beautiful sort of opalescent, um, translucent white with a copper interior. So what it what it's doing is that it's, shining through that translucent um, coating of the seed bead. And um, you can see that copper kind of shine through, which then complements, you know, the link itself. And I'll hold these up in a second and show you a close up view of what we're gonna make. Um, and then I've just got some six millimeter pearls here on the side. And I did name a source for this. You can find this, I believe, at beadplace.net. Um, Abby Berta has a lot of different beads in her amazing store and um, you could pick up some glass pearls or uh, natural freshwater pearls from the store as well. And you're supporting a local designer and artist and store, which is always great. I'm using also about three to four feet, depending on how many links you're actually making for um, the main part of our link today. And this is 14 gauge, and I'm using Parawire, um, which is another great brand of soft craft wire. This is antique copper color. And the reason I'm using 14 gauge is that whenever I hammer this, it's going to add a lot of texture to it. And I wanna make sure that my wire is nice and thick so that I can really use all of the surface to create beautiful hammered texture. So. If you're really into hammering as much as I am, then you'll definitely have a few spools of this on hand to use time and time again. Okay. Um, lastly, I'm using Antique Copper 26 gauge um, craft wire as well. This is just something that I picked up from Softwares Wire. It's a perfect match. And um, I think that that's gonna be excellent for using with the thicker wire. So, and you know, I've always got 26 gauge on hand. I have 26 and 20 gauge are my two preferred ones to have on hand. A lot of different colored spools of. So I recommend it for you guys. Tools wise, I'm using again, Brenda Schwader's Now That's a Hammer, co-branded with Freight's Hammers. I did post a link on this in the description below YouTube if you guys are on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, come find me. Silver Silk and more, um, and come subscribe to my channel. And on there you can find all the resources and the tutorials and maybe some light entertainment for your evening with me. Um, so I did list the source to where you could pick this up if you wanted to grab the full set. Um, I kind of waver between hammer companies because I love using Wubbers as well. And it just really depends on my mood. Today, I just feel like using this beautiful hammer that I have from Brenda Schwader. And so I'm gonna use it. It's got a beautiful little, like small little peen down here, really great for adding intricate texture. And then I've got a heavier, bigger end um, if I'm really wanting to just pound that wire flat. So looking forward to that. Um, and then I've just got a little like bench block in this case, this is like a collector's item, I feel like, that I treasure. <laughs> and it is from Softflex Wire. I just, I think it's so cute. I don't know what it is about miniatures that's adorable, but you know, if I have this little miniature anvil that I can actually use, I think it just is amazing. So I've kept it, love using it. Um, I don't think they carry it anymore, sadly, but um, you can always pick up those square bench blocks practically anywhere. I think beadshop.com probably has them if any place since Kate likes to do a lot of metal work. Um, so yeah, 
that's my materials. And then I've just got a few jump rings here out at the side. These are about eight millimeters um, wide or in diameter. Really great to use. So let me do a close up on these links and show you what we're making. I'm using a contrasting color palette here with the two different coppers. I want my bright copper to really pop and I want my dark copper to be the framework. And um, I chose this intuitively, but I love mixing metals and I love the intricacy that I can bring without doing too much work. So you can really see how those seed beads and that wire interacts. And that's just what makes me so excited. And then I added the pearl because I needed a counterweight to balance visually what my link is looking like. So I've got this heavy intricate part on one side and then just the simplicity of the pearl that makes it balanced in terms of visual weight. Just something to take away with you guys as you're learning in this video. Alrighty, let me show you how to make a link because that's the fun part. You can make these any size you want and you can also make them as modular as you want. The layout that I had in mind was just to do something that's just nice and linear today. But imagine making a ton of different links and then just kind of doing your own design work with it and combining them and connecting them in different ways to create an even stellar necklace. This is something that's really the cool part about this design is that you can customize it any way that you want and make it very open-ended. You see, I've already got a different shape there just based on, whoops, um, the type you know of connections that I'm making. So you could sit here and play with this for hours, trust me. <laughs> but to do this, you just wanna grab some of your wire and I'm gonna make maybe a smaller one. Um, I might make one that's even connected to this bottom one that's a bit smaller, we'll see. But let's just, let's just feel it out and see. I'm just gonna twist this around and find a decent size here that I wanna make. This looks pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna cut it off. And sometimes it's not about precise measurements. The fact that these links are very organic, you can really just put that ruler away for another day. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up the ends of my wires just by pressing it down. This is going to do a couple different things. It's going to ensure that your link is nice and connected and round, um, but you're also creating an organic shape with this. You're, you're using your hands to really sculpt and mold your link. Um, a couple of other notes here is that I wanna flush cut so this one looks like it's just at a slight angle. So I'm just gonna go back in with my flush cutters and give it a nice flush trim. So now you can see that that is nice and flat and it doesn't have a chiseled edge. And um, I'll just kind of push those together as such. And I do wanna make sure that they do connect at, and in some capacity. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want them to touch. So you can see that that's already looking very linky. And now we're ready to hammer. Okay, so let me move some stuff out of the way because I go crazy. Stuff starts to move on the table. The camera might fall out of place, but you guys just have to work with me here. <laughs> hi, Julie. I didn't get to say hi to and Deborah Perez. Hi, ladies. All right. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Teresa and Gretchen um, for joining in. Of course, Teresa is my beautiful brand ambassador and posting links over on the Silver Soap business page um, of Facebook and doing a great job behind the scenes and just as an amazing welcome committee. For those of you who have joined the Silkies group, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, please do join us because we are a fun loving group of creative people that love to use Silver Silk and love to share good vibes. It's always good energy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with my smaller um, edge first of my hammer, and I'm going to mark the places where the seed beads are going to stop. So I'm just gonna go right here. Apologies if there's noise feedback on your end. Okay, so my seed beads will kind of stop in that area, and then I want them to stop right over here. Okay, 
don't be afraid to really get in there. The 14 gauge is a very um, forgiving and very large diameter wire. So you'll notice that your links, the, the metal starts to spread a little bit, which is perfect. So now that I have it marked in place, I'm just gonna go back through and hammer out the rest of my link. I wanna kinda hold this in place, but it's gonna shift, and that's perfectly fine because we're gonna fix it all at the end. So hammering this is doing two things for you. First, it's adding a lot of texture to your piece. You can already see how much um, razzle-dazzle I've got going on there. Uh, the second thing that it's doing, it's hardening your wire. No, so this will keep your link round and in place and not shifting later on. Okay, very good. I'm gonna go again and just move everything kind of back in place. It's definitely a lot more tough to work with now that I've hammered it, but that's a really good thing. Okay, you can see that I've already got this beautiful texture going on. And now what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and measure out my silver silk chain here. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra to work with, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut maybe a couple inches here. Even if you get it on the wire and there's too much left over, you can always trim it off very easily. And I think I might have to do that anyway, so I could show you how that works. Hello, Margarita. Nice to see you from Facebook. Hi, Debbie. Got lots of folks tuning in, that's wonderful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and string my silver silk hollow mesh right on and I'm just gonna string it below to get it out of the way. This is a part now where I can start to add seed beads in. Isn't this anvil great? I could just kind of use it to hold my piece and you guys can see it very clearly. <laughs> so many uses for this. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just start to slowly string. And I say slowly because if you do this, you wanna be very precise with it. But you can start to string your seed beads right over it. And it'll kind of get to a place and stop because that's where you hammered it earlier. Because that metal has spread out on my wire, that bead is not gonna fall through. And some of these beads have smaller holes than the other, which is interesting, because I, but I believe it's might be because it's also Czech seed beads and not Japanese. Czech seed beads tend to be a little bit more um, free, might be the best word for it. Whereas Japanese seed beads, they tend to be extremely precise. So you kind of just have to pick and choose which of these seed beads might go. There we go. Luckily, I've got a ton here to work with. Okay, so you just wanna bring it up to the edge as best as you can, and then I'm gonna shift and start to string them on the other side. Yes, so Deborah is asking, so you need to make sure the beads you choose have a large enough hole to accommodate the 14 gauge wire? That is correct. Um, and upon discovery, the size 60 beads tend to do that pretty well. But yeah, you'll just wanna keep an eye out for making sure that the hole is um, is big enough to accommodate the size of wire. Absolutely. Okay, I'm thinking just maybe a couple more. Okay, on that end one, I'm actually going to just string it here at the end and then quickly shut it. <laughs> Oop, that might be a smaller hold one. Okay. Again, just kind of bend it back in place. And you can see those seed beads just cover right up. 
If a CB falls through, not a problem. We're going to make sure that our knitted wire goes right over it anyway. And we can then create our little pea pod just by scrunching in the ends of the mesh. Now, I guess it worked out to where I don't need to actually cut extra off, but if you do, you can just grab a pair of flush cutters and then just carefully trim off the edge as you need to, to be able to trim it off. But you can see there that the link is now secure, covered up. It's got this really cool texture on it and nothing is shifting in place. So this is a very successful link. Um, what I need to do now is to hide all of my mechanics, right? All those raw edges. And I do that by making a cool little bird's nest out of the smaller 26 gauge wire. So I'm gonna set this down and then I'm gonna grab that 26 gauge wire that we have. Oops. And I think what I did was I just used about a foot, maybe a little bit less, closer to maybe eight inches on each end. And that gives me a pretty good size bird's nest. Hi, Donna Mosley. I don't think I got to say hi to you earlier. Brenda Schwader is on. Girl, I'm using your hammer today. Look at that. Loving it. I'm loving the hammer. It's got some good weight to it on my wrist and I'm using it. And I really feel like the smaller um, peen here has really, it just adds so much great detail. In fact, I have another um, idea for it as I'm working with this for my silver silk finding. Um, so stay tuned, everyone. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just stringing it right through the hollow mesh, as you can see. And I'm gonna bend one side down. This is gonna help to anchor my, whoops, my loop there. So I just then start to kind of twist it around and play with it. If there's a little bit of extra copper knitted wire, just push it back and let it kind of ball up into itself. But you'll notice that the, um, that the wire tends to kind of just anchor itself around where you hammered it. So it's all gonna stay extremely secure with each other and it's not going to shift or move out of place. So this was just a really fun idea for me to develop and um, it worked right off the bat, I'm happy to say. Some of my ideas don't really do that. <laughs> um, lately, it's been better. I think it's because I put a little bit more thought process behind it and I'm like, how do I really do this? And if I don't, I just ask my friends, right? My great beat extravaganza um, buddies, my other businesses out there now that we're all working together for a common goal and sharing techniques and ideas, it's easy to reach out to them and just say, hey, like I need help with such and such. How do I accomplish this? And it's fabulous. I get so many different ideas and answers from it. And if you don't know what the great, great beat extravaganza is, you guys need to go join this Facebook group. It is a collective 17 companies that have partnered together to create a big event that is held four times a year. Our next one is coming up in June and we do it all through this private group that we've developed. Again, that place is called the Great Bead Extravaganza. Look it up on Facebook. Um, maybe someone can post a link to it. Uh, Teresa, if you're out there, that would be awesome. Brenda, maybe you can. And um, it's a huge bead show that's done virtually. I don't know how we got it together, but we did. <laughs> okay, finishing out my bird's nest on this side. So again, you just string it right through your mesh like that, anchor it with your finger, and then go around and around and just create your nice little messy bird wrap, bird's nest wrapped cap. I don't know how else to say that. That was quite a number of words that happened there. <laughs> ah, Janine. Okay, I gotta show your comment because that's just, that gives me all the feels right there. That's what I love about TGBE. So much wonderful information exchange, encouragement, and support. Honey, that's what it's all about. That's why we do crafting. It's just, it's fun, it's collaborative, it's just a feel good time to get away from stressful work um, of your day jobs or you know just hanging out with your friends. Because even though we're all digital, we're still connected somehow, right? I think we are. 
Okay. So what I'm doing is I just kind of rolled in the end, the raw end there, and then just pinched it back into my bird's nest. Doing the same thing on this side um, with the assistance of my pliers. I'm just using a pair of chain nose pliers here, very standard. Got mine from Wubbers and I love them dearly. Best tool that I've had um, working with. Aside from the hammer, of course. <laughs> so that's like my link. And if you wanted to, you could go back and hammer, you know, it a little bit more if you wanted to. Get some texture on the back side. I'm gonna use this bigger side. Works out pretty well. There we go. And you basically make a bunch of these, right? And then you can go back in and add in your pearl. So I've got a lot of visual weight on this one end. And what I want to do is draw it back to the other side because this has nothing going for it other than the texture that's on the metal. So that's where I introduced the pearl. And to do this, you just need to grab some, uh, some more of your 26 gauge wire. You don't need very much, probably about four to six inches. And you're just doing a standard wrap here. So you can go back and just wrap this around. I do three times for my securing here. One, two, three. And I just kind of picked a spot that's, you know, adjacent from where I am um, or where my beadwork is on that other end. And then I added in my pearl. Go back around. If you need to make a quick little adjustment, you can. And then just go back in and wrap it a few more times. No, like there's one thing that you need to note on here. So my wire is on the up state on this side. So whenever I wrap it, I want to make sure that my wire is down below so that it again balances out. Everything is about balance today. So again, I'm going to wrap that a few times. I generally like to do three just for aesthetics, but also security. And um, I just, what I tend to do is I just pull the wire a little bit before cutting it off. That kind of helps to just tighten it up a little bit. Go back in with your flush cutters and then just, you know, um, take this down to, to pinch it flat against that wire that we hammered earlier. And then same thing on this side, I'm just gonna, Work it around with my chainless pliers to tighten that coil. Go back in with my flush cutters, just like that. And then go in and just press it ever so gently. So now you've got an attached pearl with very little effort. And then those, those two wires, because they're the same color, just blend into each other. You don't even see it. It's great. So remember I said earlier that you can Relax those shoulders. You guys, do you, do you ever do like exercises whenever you just get up and kind of, you know, move around and just get that tension out? Because whenever I start to beat, I kind of like, I don't know, hunch over <laughs> and start to forget my form. Like I need to make sure that my back is straight and posture and everything is important. Um, so you don't permanently end up that way. So exercise while you beat, very important. Okay, let me get some tools out of the way here. I'm gonna put these seed beads back so I don't slam them across my table and have to pick them up later with the vacuum. And I'm going to work on connecting these really cool components together. So I could use the one that I added. Oh, I love that. I'm changing my design now. I I don't know. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stay true to what I had envisioned. But you see that you can actually very easily modify this however you want to, just with the amount of links that you've made. And they work up so quickly, so you could have a very impressive neck piece in no time. But we're practicing minimalist today, so I'm just going to go back in and work this design into the format that I had earlier. So you'll notice that my balance is nice and even now because I've got all of my beadwork kind of facing against each other. And then my pearls do the same thing. So I just thought that was a really clever design trick with this. And now I can just connect everything with my jump rings. 
Now here's the fun part. I thought I could hammer out my jump rings just a little bit to work hard in it and also give it that same flat texture that the links themselves have. So let's let's give it a try. Does go out of shape, but that's okay because what we can do is just move it right back. Ooh, that's nice and tough though, I must say. That is going to connect very well. And I love that it becomes a little bit organic too in the process. So I could even hold it with my chain nose pliers here. There we go. If you really are good and precise about hammering these links where the seam is, you can do a really great cold connection. Um, I'm just not that talented with hammering quite yet. Uh, so we're just gonna work with what we've got. <laughs> oh, haha, ha. Janine says your pendant spells boo, getting ready for Halloween. That is so clever. I did not even see that. Do you guys see that? <laughs> I love how great your imagination is. This is fantastic. It does spell boo and it does make my piece very versatile for any season. I love it. I'm in it. I love it even more. I mean, I loved it before and I love it even more now. So I'm just going to connect that piece together. And then I'm gonna go back in and connect this together. I'm gonna, to, of course, hammer out another jump ring. If it doesn't fly across the room, I might just end up holding it though with my chain nose pliers. It's much easier. Ugh, what was I, why was I not doing that earlier? <laughs> Ah, Ginger. Um, hi, first of all, okay, you, sir, you're saying I also have one, I love it. Are you talking about the hammer? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna hammer out just this little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab another pair of chain nose pliers and open that up. Perfect. And let's go ahead and connect this guy together. Oh, Anvil, really? That's awesome. Um, is it from Softflex, Ginger? She's saying that she has a, um, and she has one as well, but in, in terms of the Anvil. And um, I think that they're just special. I just love them. So my boo pendant is now connected and I am going to now go ahead and connect this to the rest of my neck rope here. Or in this case, I'm using leather cord. Okay, just give that leather cord a nice stretch whenever you get this stuff because it's rolled up in a spool. So it's going to have that muscle memory and you just want it to relax. So I just pull it through my fingers. Very easy. Get it all nice and warmed up. Okay, once you've done that, you can now attach your finding. Now here's what I thought, and I might screw this up, so we're just gonna do it anyway though. We're gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna see if I can actually hammer my finding here, my silver silk finding on the backside, just to give it that texture. And so I'm gonna go in fairly soft. And you'll notice that I use the smaller peen of my hammer to give it that really great texture. So far it's working, so I'm, I'm loving this. Okay, again, that just complements my, um, my pendant here with its hammered texture as well, as you can see. And for me, that consistency can't beat it. I love a good consistent design. Ooh, you know what, I forgot to... I think my jump ring there is just a little bit out of wax. So let me connect that better. Speaking of consistency, <laughs> there we go. It's like, why is it wobbly? Okay. There we go. And now my boo is backwards, but now I can open up my end cap. 
And the end cap is really cool. Now it's made typically for my capture chain and pearless chain. It's got little teeth inside of it. So it grasps onto the ball chain of my capture chain and my pearless chain. But what I've also discovered is that this little um, teeth, these little teeth inside of it are great for grasping other materials such as leather cord. So I'm just gonna shove that right in on both ends. Make sure that your leather cord isn't twisted up. So you really want it to like relax while it's on the ground or on your work surface and um, just get it nice and tucked away in there. And then I'm gonna grab my handy dandy wide nose pliers that have the coating of tool magic on there. And you just press it down as such. Very easy to do. It's nice and secure. And now I get to hammer out one more jump ring for this, because it's all going to come together. <laughs> Lynn says, by the way, hi, Lynn. Um, I mean, I do have a regular anvil, just not that cute, not just not that cute little soft flexed one. Yes, it's adorable. Love that it's in the Softflex brand. Um, but you know, any anvil will work for this. So do not stress it out, my friend. I keep hitting my like light source down here. So you probably see some shaking of the camera. <laughs> Very cool. You can see how flat and textured that looks now and opposite to the round one. Okay. Again, it's just those subtle de design details that really make the piece um, come to life, I think. So I'm gonna kind of squish that back together, bring it up. I do want my boot to face up front though, there we go. And then I'll just attach that together. You can absolutely add more pearls or anything else that you want to to this design. Um, again, I kind of just went for the minimalist approach and really loved um, just the, the sleekness that the, whoops, let's get that out of the way and let me get some of this other stuff out of the way. There we go. Just the sleekness of this piece, it's very wearable whether it spells something or not, because now I can't unsee it. Um, and it just, I don't know, the, the, again, the focus and the concentration and the excitement is in the pendant. So um, you don't really have to add much if you don't want to, totally up to you. But I think it's really cool and fun and clever. And again, if you wanted to, you know, conform, or uh, not conform, uh, if you wanted to configure these pieces in a different format, you can absolutely do that and still, you know, connect your necklace elsewhere in this piece and it becomes a really great art pendant. So that is what I wanted to show you guys tonight. There's so much to hammer, so much to do. The findings themselves can be hammered, which is great. When you do hammer it, make sure that nothing is inserted inside of the actual end cap um, because you can always uh, make it wider with your pliers after you're done hammering the little um, you know notches inside of it. So. Just a fun little takeaway for you. Brenda says, very pretty, Neelay. Thank you, Brenda. I love it whenever um, I get compliments from my friends that have invented and co-branded tools. So it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, guys, I loved spending this time with you. I'm going to scroll to see if there was any questions. Hi, Donna Chandler. I don't think I got to say hi to you earlier. Um, you were highly complimentive and very sweet for saying you're a creative genius. That is so sweet of you. <laughs> Joan is asking, how many different feeds is this live playing on? Um, quite a few, actually. <laughs> My face is all over the place. It always is. What can you say? But no, I have it on the Great Meat Extravaganza, and I've got it on the Silver Silk um, Facebook page. So at least those are covered, right? Um, several of you have intrigued about the why or the hammer that I used tonight, so I think you should definitely check it out. Again, the description is going to be in the YouTube link. So if you are on Facebook, hop over to YouTube, subscribe to my channel, and then check out the description for the video. And in there, you'll find all the resource links for the materials that I used for tonight. 
All right, you guys, I'm not seeing any major questions here. So hopefully that just means that I was very thorough with my explanation and um, that you guys have taken away some inspiration and excitement and another use for Hollow Mesh as we continue the year learning about all the different things we can do with Hollow Mesh. It is so much fun to work with. I love it. I'm 1,001%, if not 2,000% percent behind this product. I love that I get to make it and share it with you guys through creative crafts and innovation and excitement. Um, and that's why I love Tuesday tutorials. So if you don't know or are new to Tuesday tutorial, excuse me, Tuesday tutorials, you'll definitely want to mark it on your calendar so that every Tuesday I am on, and I can flash this little banner, on uh, 3.30 Pacific time or 6.30 Eastern time, like clockwork, um, on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday, unless I've got something pre-planned, in which I usually announce it in the Silkies and the, um, the Silver Soap Business Facebook page um, if I'm gonna be out on a specific day. But this happens every Tuesday, every time, all the time. Not all the time, actually, but you guys got the times. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so sweet. Um, they're getting like a flood of very nice comments and they are always fun. So I'm glad you guys got a good takeaway for tonight. What else is coming up? Um, let's see, we've got the workshop in May. I'm going to hop on board quickly to get a um, winter season workshop together. It'll be the same workshop, new dates. Same format and everything for those of us that missed out the first time around. So stay tuned for that. Any of the other supplies that I used, you can check out silversilkonline.com for those materials as well as great resources. Um, please check out my blog on there. You'll find some great ideas and tips. And we're getting ready to put out a new blog post next month. And I've actually collaborated with a very special designer. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, otherwise, you could check out all of my Facebook and social media outlets here at the bottom I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. And otherwise, I'm going to conclude it for this Tuesday tutorial. I hope you guys will join the Sil Silver Silk Silky's Facebook group page. Come chat with us. And again, um, love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out and joining me. And I will be out and about in the Silky's group and chatting with you guys there. Otherwise, um, other than that, I will see you again on the next Tuesday tutorial. Hugs, love, kisses, everything, big virtual hugs. You know I love to give hugs in all of my email signatures because I really mean the virtual hugs. And I think that's just a really sweet takeaway. And that's just the type of guy. I'm a, I'm a big hugger. Whenever I see people, I like to hug them. Couldn't do that all last year. Barely getting to it this year. Um, hopefully I'll be able to give lots of hugs in person whenever we get back to doing uh, bead shows and stuff. So love all of you. Mwah. I will see you again Tuesday tutorials uh, next time. So you guys take care.